How's it going, guys? It is 2.29 a.m. July 6th, Wednesday, here in Japan, and we have a difficult question for biochemistry slash pharmacology. Obviously, if you know the farm, you know the biochem, it's not hard, okay? But for most students, difficult question here. Nearly identical question shows up one of the offline step one assessments. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now I'll start the clip. So 59-year-old dude with advanced type 2 diabetes mellitus. He's got a two-week history of urinary incontinence. And physical exam shows a super pubic mass. This is his distended bladder. Urinary post void volume is 300 milliliters. This is increased. Okay, he's got overflow incontinence. Normal post void volume should be under 50 mils. US simile will not make it borderline. They'll say 300, 400 mils. So this is neurogenic bladder, hypotonic bladder, secondary to neuropathy from the diabetes. Okay, the same way you can get peripheral neuropathy, uh, neuropathy to your GI tract causing gastroparesis. You get neuropathy to your bladder, okay? Hypotonic bladder. It's one of the it's the it's one of the two most important causes of overflow incontinence in USMLE. The other being BPH, okay? So he's not old enough for BPH, okay? And he's not like seventy nine. So this is from the diabetes. Let's just continue through the question here. Question wants to know the most appropriate pharmacologic treatment, which is going to be bethanicol. Okay, it's a muscarinic receptor agonist, which we use for hypotonic bladder due to diabetes. Okay, so we talk about which muscarinic receptors. Literature says uh, bethanicol primarily acts on M1 receptors. And in terms of uh, the detrusor muscle, which muscarinic receptor is most salient for its function? Literature says it's all of them. Okay, but we're going to be talking about M1, M3 mix here. And fortunately for our answer choice, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'll just, I'm going to continue through. So question wants to know which which of these does bethanicol refer to? Okay, and as I just fucking said, bethanicol is a muscarinic receptor agonist, primarily M1. So we know that that's going to be G-alpha-Q, G-protein. The mnemonic being have one or three uh, m &Ms, okay, so H1, that's histamine 1, alpha 1, V1, that's vasopressin 1, muscarinic 1, and muscarinic 3. Okay, that can sound really fucking confusing, very fucking fast, I understand. I've made farm modules talking about this stuff. Okay, I'll actually link the farm modules below regarding the muscarinic uh, receptors. But the point is, for the sake of consolidation of YouTube, not making this a 14-minute clip, is... Bethanicol is going to agonize M1 receptors, and M1 and M3 refers to G-alpha-Q, which is going to be this answer choice here, increased phosphoinositide turnover. Okay, we're increasing IP3. Okay, so this is what USMLE wants you to know, increased IP3, and they've written it as increased phosphoinositide turnover. If we antagonize the muscarinic receptors in contrast, e.g. if we had uh, oxybutynin uh, use in the setting of urge incontinence, the answer would be decreased phosphoinositide turnover. Okay, If we agonize uh, beta receptors, that would refer to increased CAMP. If we give a beta blocker, we're going to decrease CAMP. And you should know that nitrates uh, are going to increase CGMP. So nitrates function to upregulate guanylocyclase, increase CGMP. Whereas unrelated sildenafil phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor prevents the breakdown of CGMP. Okay, long discussion. As I just fucking said, not going to make this a 16 minute clip. You know the deal. To make more content, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.